Band of Blades is a dark fantasy RPG published by Off Guard Games and Evil Hat Productions in 2019. It's a forged in the dark game, which means it's based on the rules as introduced in John Harper's Blades in the Dark. You'll see a lot of the same overall rules structure from Blades in the Dark, but Band of Blades adds an entirely new element of mechanics that makes it pretty unique. I don't cover any of the mechanics in this game that are borrowed from Blades in the Dark in this video. If you're curious about those, I have a review and overview of Blades in the Dark that is linked below. Essentially, in Band of Blades, players each control a soldier on the ground for one phase, but then slip into the role of a legion officer managing a military campaign at a much higher level. The game asks you to engage in a fairly specific story. At the end of the book, it suggests that you can play it however you want, but the campaign as presented is heavily connected to a lot of the book from top to bottom. And that story is this. You are a battalion of humans racing across a war-ravaged kingdom to get to safety before winter. At your heels is an army of the undead, led by corrupted avatars, and in turn by some sort of demon or sorcerer named the Cinder King. If you can make it to safety in time, to a place called Sky Dagger Keep, then you will be able to fight off the undead hordes before the heavy snows of the coming winter trap you in place. From there, you can connect with the Eastern Kingdoms and mount a counterattack or whatever. It's not actually clear what happens after you get to Sky Dagger Keep because that's where the book sort of ends the campaign. If this sounds a little odd for an RPG, that's because it is. Not only is there a specific story that you're inserted into, there's a specific end. Namely, you either get to Sky Dagger Keep or you don't. What's even stranger is that you then have a scoring system to assess how well you performed on your journey, one which according to the book takes about 12 sessions to get through. The setting is more or less European Renaissance, minus the art and philosophy. There are no dragons or elves or dwarves. Instead, there are four pretty well-realized fantasy cultures or heritages among humans, and you have muzzle-loaded firearms as well as flintlocks. In terms of magic, there is the dangerous and volatile practice of alchemy that can produce a number of supernatural effects, and a divine magic in the form of avatars that affect your campaign through super powerful NPCs called the Chosen and the Broken. The theme here is horror, given the fact that most of your enemies are one kind of zombie or another, and the remaining are once good avatars corrupted by pure evil. There is also a very well reinforced motif of desperation, since you are racing against time and managing a slew of resources at the personal level like stress and corruption, and at the legion level like time and pressure. Unlike a typical reskin of Blades in the Dark, this game brings a pretty bold change to the table. All gameplay is broken into two phases. There's the mission phase and the campaign phase. In the mission phase, players each assume a specific character, and there are seven classes to choose from. There are five specialists and two generic squad types, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. This part of the game is what most closely resembles any other Forged in the Dark game. In Band of Blades, you choose two missions for the mission phase and then make an engagement roll for the first mission to see how the action starts. Then you play out that mission in character with all the action rolls, clocks, flashbacks, and other fun mechanics from Blades in the Dark. For the second mission in this game, someone just rolls a single roll to see how it turns out. The missions themselves require a certain character type to run and can offer certain resources to the Legion, which is your home team. Each mission also comes with potential penalties for failing. The other half of the game is the surprising part, where each player assumes a nameless legion officer who makes big decisions regarding the army's resources. There are three legion roles required in the game, so if you only have one or two players, you'll need to pull some double duty somewhere. There are also two non-essential legion roles that can be filled by players. Essentially, the campaign phase breaks down into marking the passing of time, tracking the reduction in food and increase in pressure, resolving some campaign actions, and finally, generating new missions for the next mission phase. The player who plays Commander decides how to get to Sky Dagger Keep by choosing a route along a map. Each of the nodes on the map are locations profiled in the book and come with special missions that you can choose to take on in the mission phase. Each location has its own risks and rewards, with the final location being Sky Dagger Keep. But merely reaching the keep is not the end. Believe it or not, this campaign story culminates in a final single roll of the dice to determine whether your legion can fight off a broken or divine avatar corrupted by evil. After that, if GMs want to keep playing, they're on their own in terms of storyline, expansion of the setting, and specific locations. Just to touch on the dice in this game real quick, anytime you need to roll for something, you roll one or more six-sided dice. If the highest die is a six, it's a full success. 
More than one six is a critical success. If the highest die is a four or five, it's a partial success. And if the highest is a one, two, or three, that's a fail. If your dice pool calls for zero or negative dice, then you roll 2d6 and take the lower of the two dice. And double sixes in this case are not a critical success. It's worth noting that when you fail in this game, the fiction still moves forward. It's never the case that a rolled fail means that nothing happens. There are some familiar consequences to enemy actions, bad circumstances, or a bad roll if you're familiar with Blades in the Dark. But one unique effect is corruption, which represents a long-lasting debility. Corruption ties in closely with the horror theme of the game and manifests as corporeal corruption to a character called Blight. Blight goes from level 1 to level 4, and it gets pretty gross and horrifying. If a character reaches level 4 Blight, they're out of the game. At the end of every mission, players tally up their XP earned and apply it towards picking up new abilities. If a character is a rookie, they can use acquired abilities to attain the status of a soldier, and a soldier can ascend to one of five specialists depending on which abilities they pick up with earned XP. One thing I thought was odd was how characters aren't attached to players. There's just a pool of character play sheets on the table, and at the beginning of each mission, players decide which character they want to run for the mission. Once at the very beginning of the campaign, everyone at the table decides which of three so-called Chosen will accompany the Legion on their journey to Sky Dagger Keep. In the fiction, the Chosen were once human, but chose to act as representatives for a particular god. This Chosen is assumed to always stay with the main Legion force while individual characters go out on those missions but they still confer benefits to your army along the way. There's actually an option to deploy the Chosen in battle, but it's risky since they are not immortal, and losing them almost certainly spells the Legion's doom. Also at the beginning of the campaign, everyone chooses two Broken out of a choice of three. The Broken were once Chosen, but became corrupted by the Cinder King himself. This choice very strongly shapes the look of the campaign, because they each come with their own unique zombies and other undead enemies. For example, Blighter, as he or she is called, will specifically plague your legion with crows, rotters, horrors, gut sacks, and spitters. They actually get even more specialized. Each broken has a named NPC in the form of infamous, who are like field commanders with their own plans and an elevated threat rating. And the broken also have named lieutenant NPCs, who are even more powerful. I felt a bit intimidated by this book for the first 260 pages. It's 466 pages, by the way. But when I got to the GM section, it really helped to put me at ease. There's a lot of good advice on how to run the game. Plenty of it is echoed from Blades in the Dark, but there's a lot of closely tailored advice about specifically running Band of Blades, including a surprisingly in-depth explanation of each of the 11 regular actions that you can roll for in the game. Okay, so here are my thoughts on Band of Blades. Cons. Presentation of info. This book was hard for me to read. On one hand, there's this awesome game concept that was clearly playtested and polished, but on the other hand, it felt like there were some cart before the horse problems on organization. It may not be a fair criticism since when you actually get to the later chapters, everything in the game is indeed explained, eventually. But it's rough going for that first 150 pages because you don't know exactly how some of the game works, even when elements of it are being referred to pretty heavily. An incomplete story. This game is about a very specific possible sequence of events in a specific setting with specific major NPCs, and that's fine. It's a cool story, riveting even, but it ends in a place that almost seems like the end of the first of three novels. Provided your table makes it to Sky Dagger Keep and you tough out the winter, what happens next? At the time of this recording, there is no follow up supplement to Band of Blades, and I don't know if the creators plan on creating a path. For the story to continue. Could it be simplified or shortened? The book runs over 450 pages presenting a basic forged in the dark game with another sort of video game style strategy game weaved into it. It's a lot to take in and it asks for 12 sessions to see it through. Would it be possible for this game to be simpler and finished over fewer sessions? Pros, thematic powerhouse. The game is able to leverage its mechanics alongside its setting to create a very strongly reinforced theme. And that theme, of course, is flintlock, potion punk, low fantasy, grim darkness. There is a constant threat of annihilation by perfectly evil forces, and humanity itself is on the brink. Resources are always dwindling, and every fight seems critical to the Legion's survival in some way. The game does what it sets out to do. Exciting hack potential. 
There are exactly two paragraphs at the end of the book that suggest that the game be hacked to fit other genres. For example, locations could be planets instead of towns and valleys, and travel could be FTL jumps on a starship instead of trekking through mud. This book doesn't say much more than that, but it's enough to get thinking about how cool the game could be if it was reskinned in another genre, while retaining that feel of a legion of battle-hardened soldiers racing against time. Setting is good enough on its own. I found that the heritages and the world as described was thorough enough that it could be used in other games. I personally loved the humanocentric tilt of the world and the low fantasy trappings of dangerous alchemy and volatile divinity with the Chosen. The potential for spin-off stories in this world are endless. These Forged in the Dark games aren't for everyone. One of the chief complaints is that players don't get to really embody their character and do a ton of RP. That's true to a large extent in Band of Blades where you do have a whole game phase called free play where you can act out some drama and camp between missions, but it's sort of crammed in between two major phases with no important mechanics attached to it. Also the interchangeable play sheets among players kills a lot of the attachment and investment that one might have for a PC. But I do think that for people who are already familiar with the Forged in the Dark feel and pace of play, Band of Blades is a pretty awesome expansion of roles and of influence for each player. And you can't beat the grim, dark, heavy metal story of brave human soldiers taking one last stand against a faceless, ruthless king of the undead. As always, thanks for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya.